In today's Neville Goddard conversation, we return to some notes from Feeling is the Secret and one of his lectures, Mental Diets. So let's start with this quote here. Every feeling makes a subconscious impression, and unless it is counteracted by a more powerful feeling of an opposite nature, must be expressed. The dominant of two feelings is the one expressed. I am healthy is a stronger feeling than I will be healthy. So the distinction of I am healthy versus I will, although to some they could say I will and imply I am, contains the key for the mental shift we are looking for when applying this information. It's not to be in forceful denial of the physical experience, but rather it initiates or returns us to the state that facilitates the change of the physical experience. It is thus then to apply the power in a way to saturate the mind with thoughts of being healthy now. And since body is an expression of mind, all emotional relatability flows from the mental state we embody as reality is experienced by what we are in consciousness now. So I like to think a single thought into a state of mind, and then it is experienced that way. We can also feel into it, or both at the same time, as he says here. Think feelingly only of the state you desire to realize. Feeling the reality of the state sought and living and acting on that conviction is the way of all seeming miracles. All changes of expression are brought about through a change of feeling. A change of feeling is a change of destiny. All creation occurs in the domain of the subconscious. What you must acquire, then, is a reflective control of the operations of the subconscious, that is, Control your ideas and feelings. So let's dive deeper into this part here where he says, what you must acquire, then, is a reflective control of the operation of the subconscious, that is, control of your ideas and feelings. And related to the next part here where he says, the subconscious never fails to express that which has been impressed upon it. The moment it receives an impression, it begins to work out the ways of its expression. It accepts the feeling impressed upon it, your feeling, as a fact existing within itself and immediately sets about to produce in the outer or objective world the exact likeness of that feeling. So the way I like to apply this is with awareness. We are aware of each moment of each day. So there's awareness and awareness of, as in I am and what we are saying I am to. What you say I am to is the state you occupy and you can feel into it. So associate a feeling to that formless self, I. And that feeling represents the state. And then you behave, emotionally relate, and think accordingly. For example, when I'm in my ideal state of mind, I need not worry about anything else because I know from that state all desirable things are added unto me. By feeling, he's referring to a spiritual sensation. I'm in that desired state now. Then you think, emotionally relate, and behave from that state. And so does the outer aspects of life, which include people and environment. This is textbook mental alchemy. So throughout the day, I may experience many desires and I accept them as fulfilled inside. It allows me to remain in the state of mind and everything works out because to desire it is to already have it. So I like to return to this book now and then and remind myself of the feeling aspect. Having been Applying this information of the years and experiencing the effects in my entrepreneurial journey and relationships with others, being aware of the feeling throughout the day takes care of everything. And as a result, I'm able to know if I was about to enter into an undesirable state of mind. 
in relation to my projects and relationships with others and adjust accordingly by feeling myself back into my ideal state. The simple daily practice from this book is priceless. He says, You are already that which you want to be. And any refusal to believe this is the only reason why one does not see it. So what causes a person to refuse to believe that they are already the person that they desire to be? Already have what they desire? Well, from my experience, it comes back to the feeling. If I don't feel like I am the person that I desire to be, then I must be in a different state. For example, for many years, I studied NLP and selling psychology. What I noticed was that sometimes I would do something and then I would get a response. And then from an empowering interpretation of it, I would remain in my desired state and then everything would work out. The other times I would do something and based on a disempowering interpretation of the response, I put myself into an undesirable state. And then I would behave, emotionally relate, and think from that premise until I brought myself back into the desired state. Then it would start working out effortlessly again. Essentially, I was subconsciously saying the cause of what determines my state is external, which is a form of idolatry, according to Neville. So in NLP, we have a saying. The meaning of the communication is the response you get, which means the cause is within. We assume full responsibility in relation to whatever shows up till we get the favorable responses. In direct response marketing, we found that those that took whatever response they got from the market as objective optimization data recalibrated and made the next move would produce results effortlessly and faster than those who made a move and then shamed and condemned themselves about the move. They were creating unnecessary suffering in their experience because of what state they were operating from. See the distinction? So it's where you operate from, leaving the doing even and not doing, to the automatic operations from the state. So here we're taught to enter into the state first, and from there, everything happens naturally. Exactly like what we discussed in Thursday's video, when we were speaking of the flow state in regards to our projects. It's the state we operate from that facilitates the effortless change. So. A simple solution is to return to the feeling. If we ever find ourselves thinking, emotionally relating, and behaving in a way that is not reflective of our desired state. So he talks about state akin to sleep to imagine a scene that would imply the fulfillment of your desire to enter the state. Like we spoke about in the last few Neville Goddard conversations, which you can find those videos, I'll link in the description to them along with the other videos that I mentioned. I use state akin to sleep with revision or playing auto-suggestions as applicable. These days, I apply this book by being aware of how I feel throughout the day because we can feel ourselves into a state or imagine whatever implies into the state during waking hours as well. So one of the ways... I also check my state is to observe my inner conversations and I ask myself the question, are they from the premise of the fulfilled desire? Now you may notice like I do, the feeling matches the inner dialogue. And what I found is a change in the inner dialogue then matches the feeling. So we can enter into a state by having an inner conversation with ourselves inside from the premise of our fulfilled desire, which I'll talk about in a moment. He says, Talking to oneself is a habit everyone indulges in. We could no more stop talking to ourselves than we could stop eating and drinking. All that we can do is control the nature and the direction of our inner conversations. Most of us are totally unaware of the fact 
that our inner conversations are the causes of the circumstances of our lives. So he says here, to turn the tracks in which we are tied to in the direction that we want to go, we put off the former conversation and be renewed in the spirit of our mind. He then refers to the Hermetica where he says, speech is the image of mind. Therefore, to change our mind, we must first change our speech. He says, by speech is meant those mental conversations we carry on with ourselves. So, be aware of your inner conversations. If it is not from the premise of how you desire it to be, then we can carry on our conversations from the ideal premise of how you would like it to be. And then from there, we notice that we emotionally relate and behave from that state. Same is to be said about the outer aspects of life, people, circumstances, environments, etc. So if one has challenges suggesting to themselves, for example, they are their ideal now, they can initiate a conversation from the desired premise, even if their world may not appear that way based on interpretation of what the five senses perceive, because the five sensory interpretations could be from a different state of mind. So here's an example of an inner conversation that carries a person into the feeling that I put together. You could say, I feel ideal as I acknowledge that I am complete inside and I actually have everything inside now and I understand that the world projects outward from whatever I have inside. And in this moment, I recall this. As you suggest something like this, you actually, like he discusses in many of his lectures, recall being all that you desire to be now. Metanoia. You'll notice that you are operating from this ideal state, or as we discussed in Tuesday's video, operating from the vision. And so in the same lecture, he also states, the condition and circumstances of life are not created by some power external to yourself. They are the conditions which result from the exercise of your freedom of choice, your freedom to choose the ideas to which you will respond. So there's no power higher than how you feel inside. Notice this. Notice how people change in relation to you based on how you feel. A change of feeling inside corresponds to how people relate to us. It is not others throwing off the feeling. That would be, as he says, believing that the circumstance is created by some power external to yourself. I learned this in my years of public speaking. If I fell into an undesirable state around others, I thought it was the audience or someone in the audience. And then I noticed that by recognizing it was my own state, I put it to the test and I noticed something very interesting. Let's say someone said something and my reaction to it put me into a different state. I noticed when I was about to react and through feeling, I could bring myself back or remain in my ideal state. And then the interaction with the audience would continue to go smoothly. So Feeling is the Secret is a great book if you're in sales, a leadership role. By adjusting the feeling inside, you literally adjust the atmosphere outside and the interactions go ideally to reflect that state. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto suggestion to further encourage. You could say, I find it easier each day when I wake up to remain in my ideal feeling as all show up to reflect it in how they relate with me and how I relate with them. Through this inherent ability, I'm able to consciously adjust my mood to set the tone and atmosphere of my interactions with others and my environment, and thus altering the circumstances to reflect the rearrangement of my mind in a mutually harmonious and beneficial way with all. If you would like a copy of this mind map, 
The link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.